Championes. Just a uh, quickie. So this is a iRig pedal. So it's basically a nothing more than a control surface to suit an iPad. Uh, now this came in with intermittent switches. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. They're becoming less and less reliable. Their little surface mount chooch is there. I don't really have a way to test this once it's done. So we've just got to sort of have faith that replacing the switches will sort the problem. Because I don't allow Apple products anywhere near me. <laughs> so these switches here, can't really remove them with hot air because you'll melt them. So you could heat the bottom of the board and reflow it that way with some flux. Um, but what I'm going to do is show you a quick way you can remove them at home without using any special tools. So if we take pliers and we cut those legs, we're probably going to dislodge the entire pad because it's uh, the, the angle of the cutters is going to push the, the pad sideways as we try and flush cut it with the, uh, with the body of the switch. And it's probably going to rip the pad off, so we don't want to risk that. It's a little bit uh, too hairy for it. So what we want to do is remove it as gently as possible. Um, we'll put a bit of flux on there. Just gel flux, whatever you got floating around. Now I'm using Chemtools Flux Gel CTNCP. That one. By Chemtools Australia. And uh, that combined with the Chip Quick SMD 4.5 removal alloy solder uh, will allow us to remove it without using a hell of a lot of heat. So they're just lengths of fancy expensive solder. It's a different alloy that has a lower melting point. So you use a little bit of this stuff. Make sure you use flux. It doesn't have a flux core. Just melt a bit on each one. <clears throat> Don't use too much because it's bloody expensive. Says me that just put a big blob. And uh, just, just sort of work your way back and forwards. Heat up one side, heat up the other, go back. I've got the iron set to about 325 ish. And eventually, working your way back and forwards, she lets go. Nice and gently. We barely had any pressure on the tweezers there. And our pads are nice and healthy. You do have to make sure you clean that stuff off because it can compromise the solder joint strength uh, if you don't. So we've got a, oh, I've got the uh, extractor, so I'll do that. First, put some fresh solder on there. After cleaning the tip. Now I like to get a bit of uh, solder braid. A lot of guys survive just with this stuff instead of a solder extractor at all. I don't know how they do it, frankly, but got to be careful with surface mount. Make sure you don't put any pressure on the braid itself. Push it around with the iron, but if that braid sticks to the pad and then you lift the braid away, guess what? That pad's going along with the braid and you've got no pad left. So you want to be very careful. Just keep sideways movement and just to clean the last of that solder up. Right. So, how to solder a new switch on without, well, a pick and place machine or a reflow oven. So there's a new chip, uh, chip, uh, switch, you know what I'm trying to say. So what you want to do is get one pad, get a little dome of solder on there, 
just to establish that first pad. Be reasonably quick. You don't want to sit there forever on it. Just square it up a little. It's got the outline of the, uh, the switch there. Sorry, my head's in the way. Now, you can do the opposite one. Just put a little bit of downward pressure on it. Make sure it's bottomed out. Sink them down a bit. So now that's secured and lined up, you can go ahead and do the others. Now, to me, surface mount stuff isn't the end of the world. Like, everyone is afraid of it. In my opinion, it's easier to repair. You just got to be careful, that's all. If that was a chassis-mounted um, plunger-type switch, you'd have have to cut wires and strip them and and uh, feed them through and tin, well, tin the wires, feed them through, bend them over, solder them. Um, and take a lot longer. Of course, if it was a decent quality switch, it probably wouldn't need replacing in the first place, but <laughs> surface mount stuff is not mystery voodoo. It's just another way of mounting stuff and we've got to get used to it because it's how everything's built now. So there you go. That's how I do it anyway.